Today's video, we're going to be doing Madden 24 film room on the first tournament of the Madden 24 season, and we'll be taking a look at the ultimate kickoff. Now, the cool part about this video is we have kind of hindsight on our side, and we're going to be looking back to look forward and kind of learning, you know, what are some of those timeless principles that can cross-apply to no matter whatever Madden that you face. This is going to be Dez versus KMAC. At this point in the year, uh, Des was the number two ranked Madden player in the world, coming off a really good Madden 23 season, where I think that's where he made the majority of his of his career earnings. K Mac, one of the best streamers in the community, and can, just kind of a consistent uh, comp Madden player. Uh, I'm su actually surprised his earnings is so low. I thought it would be a lot higher than it was there. But um, anyways, we're going to go ahead and get into this, and we're going to go to, I think Des gets the ball first. Um Actually, no, I think it is KMAC. So um, for this for this uh, gameplay, KMAC is going to be in the running gun trips, which what's kind of interesting about the running gun trips, guys, is I believe that is what KMAC is in now. So it's kind of interesting how the the year progressed. KMAC actually, I think, left the running gun trips and then ultimately ended up coming back to it. So anyway, just kind of something to highlight. So real quick, Dez is going to be in this 3-3 Cub uh, defense, another defense that at the beginning of the year was really meta, and now is kind of coming back to, to meta. Uh, the way that this was ran at the beginning of the year was essentially a five-man A-gap look where this guy could actually shoot through this A-gap on the left-hand side here. So that's something to watch for. A lot of people that ran this defense at the beginning of the year was also running, utilizing man-to-man -man coverage principles um, as kind of a base. So you see here, actually, I think Dez is base aligned, uh, which you don't see a lot. And uh, we'll take a look here. So right off the rip, Interesting route combination. I think this is out of verticals. Puts that outside apprentice over there on the left-hand side on a post. And then we have this tight end corner, uh, short corner, which is really good for pulling outside third. So essentially, this is going to probably be a cover three beater, but the user has to kind of stay down on this little crosser in the middle of the field. So we'll kind of see uh, what does his coverage is. And as we see here, we get man coverage. There's that post. You see, this is why I think trips tight end. Uh, tends to struggle at the highest of levels in Madden due to the fact that the bumping in spread out formations, it doesn't matter if it's trips, spread, doubles, any of those formations, the bumping is kind of a problem. Now, kind of interesting here, KMAC is going to be audibling to this type flex formation, an old uh, kind of formation Madden's been good for a long time, utilizing this cross play with the double wheels, double drags, rolls out, hits a drag late, kind of an interesting read there, but throws that on the sideline. And again, the whole idea I had with this was just to kind of look back at what they were doing, why they were doing it. You can't really do this audible from 3-3 to 3-3 Cub anymore, which is really unfortunate. This back off of the triangle receiver I wanted to talk about in just a minute, but there we see kind of a nice route combination from KMAC. We'll take a look at it here. This is curl flat. I know that he still runs this. So this is a, a Texas route from the running back apprentice. We have a drag, and then we have a post. It's really good man-beating play. And then essentially on this left side, you see here that he leaves the curl. Um, that You could also actually end up streaking that, and it'd still be a pretty good combo. But essentially it's a Texas or trail technique. And so it's just going to give man-to-man -man coverage a lot of trouble because you have a lot of crossing routes. And as you see, you know that's going to be open. Guys, in man coverage, typically, this is what I like to tell people, crossing routes are really normally the meta, and just in terms of beating man coverage. This is in real life as well, like uh, shallow cross, uh, slant post, all those plays um, are really good man beating routes. In And then in zone concepts, if you're playing more of a zone-based coverage, typically flood concepts are a little bit more of the standard uh, way in which you want to attack zones, so high lowing one side of the field via a flood concept. All right, so second and 25 here, we'll take a look. And you see just sitting four, so nothing too crazy. Um, and then this is what we get, uh, essentially basically a cover four, shade down cover four. Uh, Dez, in my opinion, is, is one of the best players in the world to watch on defense. He goes back to that same combo and kind of some weird animations there. Dez is one of the best players in the world to kind of watch on defense. I think defense is, is much harder than offense in Madden. Because, I mean, for a lot of different reasons, but defense is all about adjustments and tendencies and trying to guess what your opponent's going to do and putting the right adjustment at the right time. Here, k is going to go to a five wide, probably going to be a wide cross type of concept or a corner route to the tight end, goes to verticals, got the short corner, got the crosser coming over the top of that, kind of an interesting combo, and able to get out of there with Warren Moon and get to the sideline and, and scramble up. So it's going to give him a manageable fourth down situation. So fourth and ten. 
And again, this is the first term of the year, so uh, a, lot, a lot of the patches hadn't happened yet, but there's a lot of concepts that we're going to see that you can actually carry over into the game today, next year, doesn't matter. Here we see an interesting thing. He actually mans this guy up here, more than likely probably going to have a scissor adjustment with these man ups. Um, this is something that you know pro players do all the time, and they normally do it out of bunch, but now a lot of times you get this scissor adjustment out of trips, and what this allows you to do is essentially try to bait this this fade, and it also allows you to play kind of press coverage here. So kind of an interesting adjustment and uh, something that you don't see a ton, but I do think is a really good adjustment for trip side ends. So you see here kind of a – and actually doesn't end up scissoring here, I don't think. This is just a third. But we got a streak corner. You see brought that guy inside just a step, and I think that's deep – Actually, I don't know that we had KOs at this point in the year, so I don't think he did KO that. We also don't have uh, set feet lead yet. So those are, you know, you kind of see a little bit of a difference. What's really interesting is that the Madden year progresses, it essentially gets faster as the year goes on, not just with the speed of the players. The speed of the game, you'll notice, it kind of picks up throughout the year. So the ultimate kickoff is kind of the slowest pace you're ever going to see. And then it just kind of gradually continues to increase throughout the year, not just the speed of the players, but the speed of the game, the speed of the passing velocity, all that stuff. Here we get this nice C route on the left side. Love this route combo. He's going to hit this. And we still see this ran today. This is still a combo that we see, um, you know, a ton in Madden today is is that C route on that on that side to be able to attack zone. Essentially, it's a you have that outside receiver and then you have that kind of slot receiver in the trips and he's able to clear out a lot of space for you to be able to attack. So now we're going to get Dez on offense. Now Dez is in Jets, and he was in, he still is in Jets. So he's been in Jets from day one. He loves this little flip running back base. Um, and the reason why that halfback base is so good is because when you flip that, you want to hand that off. You'll notice when he runs base, he normally is going to have the running back to the right. Now Bunch Strong, this is a formation that proved to be probably one of the best formations in the game this year, if not the best. And we're going to see a route combo here right off the rip. Uh, and this was wide trail. Essentially what we had was a streak and a corner on that left side with a backside kind of high, low, shallow concept where we're looking to hit that post route. So here he's going to throw that post route again. Without KOs, this is going to be, you know, a very completable pass. Ends up getting out of there with Hester and uh, actually going to end up scoring. So kind of a, a almost like a little bit of a broken play there, but ends up getting in the end zone. K-Mac is another one that I like to watch on defense. Um, he does some interesting things on defense, primarily probably because he's such good friends with Noah up next, who I would consider to be right up there with Henry in terms of his defensive capabilities. And, you know, if you're looking to study defensive players, I think Dez, uh, Noah, Henry, those are probably some of the best ones uh, to be studying. Obviously, K-Mac is going to do a lot of what Noah has probably – because they, I, I'm pretty sure they still work together, so – uh, second and four, trip side in, short side trips here. And we're going to go with this combo. Love this. So we got a streak. This combo is still very much used, utilized today. A couple different ways you can get to this. Now, we use a motion slant. At this point in the year, um, people, I guess, still were using slant routes. Slant routes are going to stop a lot of times in the middle of the field, unfortunately. So that's something to kind of monitor. Hopefully that is something that is fixed in next year's Madden. The, the slant stopping in the middle of the field is really, really bad for the game because it literally takes one of the most popular routes in Madden for the last ever, and it makes it almost useless. You can't really utilize it as a man-beating route, and slants obviously are really good for attacking man. Uh, love this. This play is still very much so utilized. This is the play flood, so he doesn't have a tight end apprentice. So the primary reason why he is in the running gun trips, in my opinion, is probably because it has this tight end crosser. So you can still get to some of the slant post type stuff that a lot of people like to do out of trips. So this play, you're going to get a flat. You're going to get a slant or a drag kind of underneath, a streak, a flat to plot the flat zones. And what this does, and this is important, this route combination right here is so good in Madden every single year. And the reason why is because it puts this defender, which is their user, in a ton of conflict. Because if he carries this drag, this post can be thrown here, and this post can also be thrown on the sideline. If he was to carry the post, so let's say he robots back to the post, this drag can be thrown underneath here, underneath here, underneath here, all the way across the formation. So this is a route combo that will forever be one of the best route combos in Madden every single year. It's also really good against man. He actually has the flat here. The, the whole purpose of this flat is to pull any flat zones out so that you can throw that 
drag kind of right in that little window. I think he does throw the flat actually and gets out and makes uh, this is just a really it's just a really good route combo. It spaces the field well. Um, you want to call route combos. This is a really big principle for Madden every single year. You want to be calling route combinations that attack every element, every aspect of the field as much as possible. You want to you want to be able to attack the entire field with your route combinations, and arguably you want to be able to attack the entire field with your formation. This is a principle that air raid offenses utilize in real life. They stretch the field uh, sideline to sideline, not just sideline to sideline, but also vertically as well. So there's vertical stretches and there's horizontal stretches, and that is kind of a super important element to be able to utilize within an offense. So uh, Dez actually switched to Dollar here. Uh, he was in 3-3 Cup pretty much the first drive and kind of switched to base press Dollar. So at this point in the year, base press Dollar, this is DB Fire 2. So you're going to get this. And this is pretty much still what we get a lot of people doing from Dollar. Now, what's going to happen is as the year goes on, we'll kind of add this little blitzing element as well. But in general, um, this is this has been good in Madden. This, 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 this concept right here has been a solid blitz in Madden for a really, really long time. And so you see that these are like timeless principles that are just universally applicable no matter what Madden that you're playing. It goes to verticals with the running back wheel. k Mag is kind of interesting to watch on offense. He does a lot of, like, I don't know what the right word is. I, I, would, I would consider it freestyling where he just kind of randomly does stuff. And, and he may have practiced it too, but it just seems like, you can kind of see it as he like designs the combo. Like you see how he's taking his time to audible. And then it's like a slow progressional hot route. Like to me, that's a little bit more freestyle. -y. Here we're going to get a Mabel on that left-hand side. He kind of baited him. And that's actually amazing that I, I cannot believe he threw that. Um, that should have been intercepted. That was a backed off 30 yard cloud that it right there kind of illustrates. I think the importance of KOs for defense and Matt and next gen Madden in next gen madam because the movement is so sluggish especially defensively you kind of almost need the KOs because if you don't have the KOs stuff like that happens all the time um, they're able to just ag you they're able to catch the ball in traffic when they really shouldn't be able to like you're able to throw stuff that's uh, like objectively not open so uh, i just i just personally pref uh, if i'm going to play defense on next gen madam i kind of feel like you need KOs even though they don't have a set feet lead, you're seeing that you can still like kind of just put you, – you, there's not a whole lot of a consequence for a bad read. That's that's part of the issue. So here it goes with a little run, first and goal. Now red zone, this is also universally true. Now he's actually going to go to goal line here. And I think Dez is in goal line 6-2. Or no, is this 5? This is probably 5-3-3. This is probably five, three, three. Goes to the pitch. That was kind of terrible. That did not work out well. At this point in the year, most people probably didn't have a great plan uh, for the red zone. Now we would see maybe speed option. We would see some more gimmicky type stuff. We'll see what he ends up going to, second and goal. Um, going to this combo, I love this. Take a look at this route combo here to the left side. So we're going to use that. We're utilizing this crosser, right, because we know that that's going to get in a soft spot. We're kind of attacking here. This route combo has been good in Madden for at least the last four years. Um, but this is a really, really good combo. We're really looking either for the in route kind of right in here, the drag kind of right in here, or the deep cross over the top of those routes. So this is a great route combo for the red zone uh, specifically. And we'll take a look and see what he's able to do. Again, look at the sluggish. I don't know why we're doing this. Is this are we trying to clock? Are we doing timeout? Take a delay a game. He ends up taking a delay a game here. Maybe he couldn't snap the ball. Maybe he couldn't snap the ball probably what it was so second sometimes when you hot route on next gen also the 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 game kind of freezes and then you become unable <laughs> unable unable to snap the ball so so you see here this is going to pull that flat out and then this guy's coming so the user is going to have to choose right again what are we who are we putting in conflict a lot of these route combos guys is all about putting the user in conflict so he cannot cover two routes um, so what you'll see right here is he's going to have to choose between the slant and the cross. So you see here he chooses the slant because obviously look at all that space that's open. So now what KMAC is going to be looking to do is throw this over the top in the back corner of the end zone. We'll see what he does here. And actually because this flat got a little bit of depth, now the scramble becomes open. So he's going to try to scramble in and uh, get up to about the two-yard line. 
So second and goal. Now we're going to kind of set some audibles here, some under center runs. Going to go from trips and audible into an I-form type set, looks like. And we'll take a look at what, what that's going to mean for him. So here we go. Third and goal. Ball on the two-yard line. Audible down into the I-form wing. And this has been a good I-form pro. And pretty much the run that has been good in Madden for – a really long time has been stretched. Now, KMAC, this is still something that people do. We saw this in the Madden Bowl. We saw this at a lot of different points in the year. One of the best red zone concepts is this little speed option, and they're going to try to either run it in with the quarterback or they're going to try to jurtle pitch it out here, which is going to dumb this defender out. The only way that this gets defended well is if you man this guy up on the running back. If he's in any other adjustment, it's really tough to defend that speed option. So, um, and, and manning up the running back is kind of a, a wasted adjustment if they do pass the ball. So anyway, let's take a look at kind of how this plays out. So you see here, here's the journal. So at this point right here, the only person is this defender. So he's going to dumb this defender out by journaling and pitching the ball typically. So you see here, journal actually goes going to go ahead and keep it with the quarterback and wasn't able to get in. So he's probably going to go. But it's, isn't it interesting, guys, that speed option, the speed option pitch play, has been has been something that is a universal red zone concept for a long time now and again i believe this tournament was played like like in september i want to say it was in like september so going to go to stretch this is an rpo stretch so we have a little smoke screen on the back side that's actually wide open because he ends up run committing one of the real advantages to rpos at this point in the year was it really helped um it, it basically helped with uh like run logic and he actually doesn't get in there. Oh, he does get in. That's crazy. The smoke screen was wide open to the left side. At this point, we didn't really know how powerful um, actually throwing the RPO was uh, within the within the game. It is also kind of interesting to me to kind of like reflect back on this and realize like like this is this game was played like in September, right? And at this point in the year, people had not necessarily I think realized how powerful RPOs were. And so because of that, actually throwing the RPO, and if we were playing this game, you know, today, they probably would have thrown that smoke screen. Here's another one of those. I think he's going to go back to that wide trail. Here we've got corner, streak, uh, and then he's kind of doing this interesting, like, drag, dig combo, which is kind of odd um, and really hasn't, hasn't really worked. I think their purpose of doing that is to hold the user in the middle of the field. Going to go short side bunch at this point. This was also something different. So, like, short side bunch was much more popular than wide side bunch. And now that's kind of completely different. So, here we go to wide curl at this point. Um, so, what's the why is this play good? Well, you're going to put a little in a lot of conflict over here with the two man game. And then he's actually going to run kind of a levels or drive concept where we're going to be able to bring this guy back over the middle. Uh, and there just take, takes his little check down to the running back, but nothing too, nothing too open right there. Uh, see at this point like you know I'd be <laughs> we have yet to see an RPO screen to the right you know which is kind of surprising because of we know how at this point how good those are so those were still the reason I'm saying that is those were still really good in August September but we just didn't you know most people didn't know that and so as as, as someone that you know really encourages people to lab you um, the more you lab, the more you find stuff like that, right? So that's where it's really important to be either buying ebooks, learning ebooks, whatever, um, so that you can you can get that knowledge, or so that you can or play the game a lot, play the game a lot, watch a lot of Madden. Those are ways that you can accumulate that knowledge. So here he is going to go to this bunch tight end, and he does actually throw the bubble screen, and so that was something that was you know, found in September and Des literally does, he throws that bubble screen all year long. You'll, you can watch any, you can pick it up at any point in the year and watch Des play and he'll throw that bubble screen. Now there wasn't very effective, but there are situations in which that was, you know, a really good, especially in the red zone. That's a really good route combo. Here he goes to the short corner at a corner strike and he goes to it short side, which we really did not see much at this point. But we get a high-low. I love this combo, this little running back in, and then the, the backside. Um, now, the purpose of blocking the tight end is due to the specific blitz that KMAC is running. And we see this is going to be open on that sideline. Let's see if he possession catch it. Gets a bad free form. At this point, another thing that wasn't really done at a high level 
was blue passing. That was one of the biggest things that was found late in the year. And actually, David T was on that from the very beginning of Madden. And, and a lot of people, this is interesting, a lot of people didn't listen to him, right? So it kind of shows, again, the importance of labbing, learning, always trying to figure stuff out. Because there might be some very minor things such as blue passing that could completely change, you know, how how your passing is 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 done. So here he goes to the verticals play, and we get this little animation here. Again, if there's KOs, KOs in the game, that's bagged. But because there's no KOs, and you have everybody at this point in the year was probably utilizing gift wrap because gift wrap, if you didn't use gift wrap, you could not catch high balls. And um, so, you know, there, if there's no KO and they have gift wrap, it's kind of a great combo. Again, notice that he ran base from right to left. The reason he ran base from right to left is because his quarterback is right-handed. When you are in a formation such as gun bunch, gun trips tight in, not, it does not apply to offset. So like bunch strong offset, it doesn't apply, but trips tight in offset, it doesn't apply, but to like trips tight in a regular bunch, a regular tight, you want to be handing the ball off. Um, to the running back on the side of the arm of the quarterback. So you want to run base from right to left with the right hand quarterback. Here we go. This is a concept that was used all year long. It's the motion out a bunch strong and corner strike. We're going to manipulate that C route there to that side. And then on this back side, notice street corner. So we're doing basically a, what, what would be considered a double corner route where we're kind of attacking both sidelines uh, with our route combination. First and goal, this has been the biggest struggle in the entire of the entire Madden season. KMAC actually still utilizes this defense. This is 4-4 split. We're going to pinch and crash probably down, and then we're able to you know play some different types of coverage. But this is the red zone defense. KMAC has utilized the entire year, and a lot of people consider KMAC to have one of the better red zone defenses in the game. So it's kind of interesting to me that this defense was found in – September, right, August, um, and was good all year long, right? It just goes to show the importance of labbing. It goes to show the importance of um, just, you know, really diving deep into the game to try to figure out some of these little things. So you see you're getting pinched D-line, got the spread linebackers. It's going to run wide zone. We'll see how this defends the run. I would assume the user's right here um, to try to shoot runs, but I'm not sure on that. Uh, this wide zone – was a and then oh okay so now we're rolling out so again this is another thing um you know at this point in the year we really recognize that rolling out is super super powerful des you know month one of the game has a rollout play so those are just like it, it's just interesting to me but it just kind of goes to show the importance like i said of labbing and trying to figure these things out four four run ball again he ran base from right to left it did not work i mean it got some yards but it did not ultimately work and so now he's in a position where he has to make a choice. Now, what I would can most people will go for this because, um, but but due to the fact that he can take this clock down because he took all K Max timeouts, this is going to allow him to just easy, he can easily just take a field goal um, because he does get bought a half. So he has a, a really good chance to be able to double dip. He might actually ultimately go for this. Um, we'll see. But he probably should probably should kick here. Uh, just because he gets ball to half. But anyway, 4-4 four, four split is going to maybe at least look at it. Here we go, stretch alert bubble out of slot. Okay, he does go to this RPO out of bunch strong. Kind of an interesting hike here. And you don't get great blocking from – or not – you don't get a great gap shoot from KMAC. This is going to be wide open right here. And then look at this bubble screen. The only th reason that's playing played is because he has a cloud out there or a hard flat. And Des is able to get an easy, pretty much an easy touchdown. Like you literally anybody could have scored right there on that with how open that run was. So trips tied in. And we're going to back this guy off. We'll take a look at the coverages that Des is rocking. But it's been pretty basic coverages, honestly. Um, it's going to leave that D-line spread. At this point, a lot of people are leaving that D-right spread. So you see DB Fire comes in off of, off of the right. Really nice. And then this is going to force K-Mac to have some pocket problems. And you see we're going to get that sack. So that's going to take it to halftime. And uh, we'll kind of skip ahead. I think they're doing some halftime jargon. We'll kind of back this up. I want to find here. Okay. So back to ball. And we're going to go bunch verticals running back Texas pattern. Uh that's basically a slant post concept. Bad, kind of a little bit slow user from GameAct. 
did have the kind of the right idea, but just didn't get the job done. Uh, go back. I don't know what that one is. Was that Y Trail with a? That might have been Corner Strike with a hot rum or a outside apprentice post. Also notice, like in mud at this point in the year, you know you have backfield apprentice. You have um, here we go RPO. Now take a look here, RPO. Look how open this is. You could throw that right at this point in the year. People weren't really throwing RPOs. Not as not throwing them as much. They're calling them, but they wouldn't throw them um, as much as they do now. So, but this is wide open. I mean, if he throws that bubble, he's going to go back to it here. I think going back to it again. Open doesn't throw it. Just takes his run. And, I mean, the run is also wide open. <laughs> um, kind of has everything right now. K-Mac is running this DB Fire 2 as well. Base press dollar. Um, so here we get a short side flood. You don't see this combo called much more. But what's interesting about it is you have this trail and then you have this post. So you kind of have a slant post in the middle or a high-low in the middle. And then you have a high-low to the outside, even if you put the running back to the flat here. So you see... See how we're gonna go drag. See how the see how much conflict this guy's into the side. Look at all this. That this is actually open. Let's see if he throws that. Doesn't throw it. Uh, he had a lot of stuff open that he did not throw. He gets a random knockout. <laughs> um, all right, second and ten. And Dez's strategy is to come out a bunch every time and then audible. I personally would come out and bunch strong every time. I just think it's a better formation. Goes inside cross. Now I know he still utilizes this play right here. This is a a play does still uses to this day. It's to utilize the C route to the left and then kind of have a, a drive concept over the middle. So you see here, C route's going to be open because the wheel is going to pull any deep blue zone. And then it's just kind of a hard, uh, it's a hard route to defend. Doesn't throw the C route, waits about 20 minutes and then throws. I don't know why he did that. Maybe, maybe just because of the fact we don't have set feet lead at this point. So it's harder to kind of zip the ball into some of those windows. Anywho, uh, first and goal ball on the eight yard line. And going to go down to that I form slot formation. It's got that RPO threat to the right. We'll see what he does. This is not sure what this another rollout play, another bag. And why are rollouts better now? Probably just because the quarterbacks are faster. And there might be something that they're doing from a protection perspective that makes it a little bit easier um, to, to get the edge on a rollout. So here we're going to go to trips tight end X under. This was a combo that a lot of people ran here. Let's see if this is – okay, so we're going to go with a slant, almost like a slant post concept, but we're going to smart route the in route. Motions over this out route. So this is a play – I'd like to see a running back streak, but at this point in the year we weren't really throwing running back streaks, right? We were throwing wheel routes because wheel routes are really good against man, and historically wheel routes have always been really good. If we if if this is a running back streak, it's probably a touchdown, right? This is wide open. It's kind of coming in this pocket, but now the user is able to put all of his attention here, and he still throws it. Oh, he still scores. All right, uh, and that's because of KOs. Because there's no KOs, you can you can kind of throw stuff like that. Let's see here again, kind of the play. All right, so K Mac gets the ball on offense, goes to that tight flex formation, looking for that kind of potential bomb over the top. Not able to hit it. Just going to roll out, scramble. Also, at this point in the year, I don't know if we knew to blitz our user on a three-man rush. Pinch crash down, blitz your user on a three-man rush to make sure that you get better sheds. I don't, I don't see that people were really doing that at this point. So it's some of those really little things that you, you know, that you just learn with practice. So here's a, a combo. I don't. Uh, we're going to have a whip route to the left corner, just basically main coverage. Sends the pressure and able to get a stop there. So second and 10 situation. Ball is going to be on the 33-yard line, right hash. And we're taking a look here at what we have. Uh, and this is this is that A-gap pressure. So you see here you get the A-gap pressure. The reason this is good is because if he sends five out, this almost always comes in. He still makes a great quick read, but – it's just it's hard to beat this it's hard to beat this uh five man a gap without blocking somebody so here this is a combo you don't see it called a ton but it is a good route combo um it's a five out and this was really good in man 23 man 24 essentially what we're trying to do is we're going to look at this player if this guy bails and this guy blitzes this guy is going to be wide open um so what they basically have to do is zone 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 and then the user is going to be put in conflict because the user has to either go back to this 
curl, which is going to leave the drag open, or sit on the curl, which will typically leave that post route, uh, post route open. So that's kind of the idea with the play. So we look out here to the right side, we see flat. So that's going to, so, so essentially we have cover two, right? So at this point in the play, this is what's so cool about like just being able to read the defense quickly. At this point in the play, KMAC already knows we're not throwing that, we're not throwing that, and we're not throwing the streak. We're either throwing, and we're really just all the attention now, his eyes, more than likely, he's just staring right here and saying, okay, what's the user do? What's the user do? What's the user do? At this point, the user has fully committed to the post. We should throw the ball right there. Because he rolled out, it made it a much, much more difficult read than it probably had to be, and he almost threw an interception because of it. Gun trips tied in. And we're going to go verticals, running back Texas. All triangles open probably for a touchdown. Missed it. Again, what one of the other things that I will say is because you didn't have any KOs at this point in the year and you're using gift wrap on offense, you could catch stuff in traffic like nobody's business. So that was another little underrated element. Second and 10, ball on the 44-yard line. Des probably going to be sending people. Um, block the tight end. This was the this has been the best way to pick up three three cub forever, is to block the tight end. Uh, and here we're gonna get a streak, a corner, a wheel. And the purpose of the wheel is probably to beat main coverage and then the running back uh, or the drag. So you see at this point, pretty much everything is dead. The only thing is this might get open over the top of that, but doesn't. And now you got to throw the ball away. All right, so third and ten situation. If I can skip ahead here. Third and ten situation, ball on the 44-yard line. Now we're back in a dollar more than likely so that we can run this blitz right here from DB Fire 2. He does uh, infamously brings these safeties down. So why would he run? Why is KMAC running this to the left side? Because if he is in a cover two coverage, a lot of times this will open this up. And we're going to essentially put this defender in a significant amount of conflict. What uh, Dez ends up doing is a cross man here, a cross man here, as you can see, and then he's able to uh, take some of those quick throws away. And KMAC ultimately ends up checking down to the, to the out route that really was kind of open, but not really. And it's going to bring up a fourth and four situation with about 57 seconds left in the third quarter. Goes to that quick snap play at a curl flat. Actually hits it and is going to get in for a touchdown. So kind of caught Dez in a, in a bad coverage and is able to uh, go to that combo. And again, that combo is something that's still really utilized, especially against man coverage because it puts a lot of conflict in man coverage. Here we go to bunch tight in. Street corner flat with running back Texas. It's a combo I still use uh, today. Love that combo at a bunch tight in. It's going to go to verticals. Uh, actually, not going to go to vertical. It's going to go to Y curl. He loves Y curl. I don't know why. I mean, it's okay. All right. So here we go. We're going to go to inside cross. So this is where we get the scissor. So we get a scissor here. What should happen is this running back wheel is a touchdown. If the running back wheel doesn't get bumped by that, it's a touchdown. Because it got bumped, it's not. But this guy's still able to beat me in. Possession catch that right on the sideline, and it's a good read. The C route was one of the best routes in Madden 23 for attacking man-to-man um, -man coverage. And in this year's game, it's not been as popular, but it's still really effective. Um, here's that play flood. We're going to go streak, corner, and then what we have here is a drag and a dig. And I this combo has been, was utilized pretty much all year. And the main idea here is they cannot cover this corner. They have to user it. So because the, the user has to leave the middle of the field, then you have essentially a nice little kind of box in which you can throw the drag or or the dig over the middle. So you see, really, and, and the best way to stop this play truly is pressure, uh, but he is going to kind of fit it in a tight window. That corner route was also really good this year at attacking uh, kind of man coverage, and Dez is going to go ahead and take it to the fourth quarter. We're now kind of getting into a little bit more of a clutch situation. Dez kind of needs to score and then give the ball back to KMAC so that he can get the ball back in the event that he doesn't stop it. Here he goes to that double corner play he loves. Got that short corner, got that C route, pretty much had everything there, and he's able to get in the end zone for a touchdown. So now it's going to put KMAC in a kind of an awkward position where you can't really clock this out, um, or it's not really easy to clock this out. But 
obviously Des has shown, you know, really no sign of being stopped this game. So first and 10, going to go to bench, I think. I don't know why we're going to go to that, but we're going to go to tight flex. And, oh, no, wide receiver cross, running backs wide open. Missed him. And going to roll out. So K-Mac kind of showing, you know, a little bit of, I don't know, like just kind of like wanting to roll out. I'm not sure why at this point in the year, but. There was a lot of things that could go wrong rolling out at this point. Your quarterback's not as fast. People weren't blue passing as much. Going to go to this play. Again, I'm not sure. Like, hash marks matter. Like, this is this post is never, never going to beat cover three. So, I'm just not sure why he's doing stuff like that. Like, hash, you know, you to me, that would be – I would consider that a bad play call because your ball's on the left hash. That short corner is never going to beat cover three. That crosser is never going to do anything for you. He Maybe he knows something. But he goes back to this. Now, this – Good route combo, solid route combo. Can really be ran no matter where you're at. Des ends up sending pressure. That tight end route, tight end out route does not beat man coverage as good as it did in man 23. And so you are you are kind of seeing some of the tension of like what I ran in man 23 might not necessarily work exactly the same in man 24, but conceptually a lot of things uh, do carry over. And it's about kind of discovering those little things year in and year out. Here we get a kind of an interesting, uh, some interesting adjustments here to the left side. Going to do this motion over. This has been the play. Going to go with that 30-yard cloud. He's got that tight end drag. Going to take that tight end drag. Almost gets a KO. And um, K-Mac going to be able to keep cooking on offense. So audibles too tight. I feel like I have not seen him get really one good play in tight. And, again, this is a cover three bomb. So – the idea here is if Des calls cover three, this is a touchdown. The problem is, look at the hash. Cover three bombs are, and this has been true of every next-gen Madden game, you would want to run your post from short side or from the wide side to the short side of the field, not from the short side to the wide side typically um, because of the way the middle third is going to play. So just kind of an interesting decision here. Doesn't even get a good streak route. And you see, I mean, there's just nothing open. Like, it's – it's really bad route combos, in my opinion, or bad situational. Like, I'm on this hash mark. Why are you calling it like that? You know, obviously, uh, because because literally this has been true. This has been true every year. Now, uh, trip side in at this point, and here we're going to get a runner running back wheel. So, now this actually works because the running back wheel is going to pull that third, and then the corner is going to be able to be thrown there. Because we don't have set beat lead, it's at this point in the year, it's a little bit more difficult of a throw. Like, you're going to have to throw this with a lot more anticipation. Like you're going to have to throw that right now. Or, as you see here, he's got the triangle receiver. And instead of throwing the three wide open receivers, we're going to throw the one guy that was covered on the field. Third and 10, uh, ball on 35, four minutes and 18 seconds left in the game. Des probably going to be sending pressure here, going to back this guy off. The purpose of this back off right here. It's just so this guy cannot beat you in a seam streak. If you press this seam streak, this was tip. This was um. It could if you were in cover zero, this could get over the top of that. Uh, good man coverage. There's the drag. Good read. And um, like that combo a lot. That was good. But again, you kind of see like it's it's just interesting to me to watch like the the combos because if we looked at KMAC about you know nine months after this game, you would see. So, some similarities, but a lot of these like kind of odd route combos would not be on the field. Um, so it's just kind of interesting. And again, that's why I was talking about like the game gets faster. You learn what works versus what faster. Um, you see how slow K Mac is calling his plays. It's just kind of it's just kind of like oh, you know. And he's basically unanimously running his trips to the left. I don't think he's ran the ball. He really has not ran the ball much. Um, there's that wheel corner corners out no nope. and you see I mean because you don't have set feet leads you can't make some of these throws so you have to be a little you know you have to kind of work a little harder offensively to get your stuff open and in my opinion you have to put a little bit better route combos on the field than what we've seen so far curl flat here it is this, this has been big for him all game long we're gonna use the running back wheel got a nice quick throw right there to the right if that's and he is gonna take that this bumping has happened for the last three years, and it can sometimes mean that that route does not get caught. But there you go. Nice read and able to move the chains, put himself in a position where he can go score a touchdown. 
So trips tied in. Uh, now we have wide side trips. Wide side trips, pretty much meta for the most of the part of the year. So a lot of people were flipping their trips so that it was always the wide side. We're gonna get a motion out running back streak, a double streak, and then we should get. Okay, we're gonna run four streaks. Um, all right. So why do this? Probably to try to manipulate the double Mabel, right? So right here, circle could very well be open for a touchdown. He should throw this. That's open. See what I'm saying about the game getting faster? Like, at this point in the year, it's so, for some reason, so slow pace. Like, if you freeform this up and inside, it's a touchdown. And instead, we take a 10-yard sack. So it's like stuff like that. Second and 20, backed off, cl backed off cloud more than likely here to the left side. It's kind of been the standard thing that Dez has done every time he's backed that guy off. And we're going to get a slant route, which we know is terrible. Uh, but he's trying to do that to beat man coverage. And throws that quick throw, which is really not that open. And is going to catch it because we don't have KOs. <laughs> Third and 16. You see how valuable KOs are to defense, um, because if you don't have KOs, like you're you're gonna catch everything. Third and sixteen, gonna go to gun doubles. We have not seen that much, so we'll see what combo he has cooked up. Looking for a corner route to the left. Got a little sharper corner route. I like this little out route, and then the running back. I think he actually has him on a streak. So you see this. See how much more open this is than the wheel route we showed earlier. So now look at how much conflict the user's in. He kind of has to go to this, but now he's going to have to bail back to this, right? And then now we can either check down there or we're even going to have the ability to scramble up the middle of the field as well. So we'll kind of see how his user plays. Ends up taking that read. Going to get him about six yards. And it was a good user from Dez because now K-Mac is in a situation, fourth and 10. He has to, you know, it, it's a harder conversion for him. And he's running his trips to the short side of the field. We get that backed off cloud flat, take away any corner routes on that right side. And then we'll see here. I mean, this has been kind of the standard. Every time he's motioned that running back out, it's been on a streak, like every single time. So uh, as we look at this here real quick, you know, you see here the corner route is a really hard throw to make. The dig is going to be guarded. And you see pretty much everything's bagged. Let's see what he ends up throwing here. Gonna throw that and it gets stopped. Uh, so another little element that was at play right there was Warren Moon's release. Having a quarterback that has the best release in the game is really, really valuable. And at this point in the year, we didn't really have that, right? We didn't know, you know, we didn't know for sure what the best release was. Now we know it's Lamar Jackson's or traditional four. Those are things that, you know, again, I think make a big difference. And, and those are some of the things that do change every year. First and 10, run the ball. Bo Jackson, and I, I think, I can't remember what Warren Moon actually, what, uh, oh, Warren Moon got Gunslinger. That was why he was used. He was fast and he got Gunslinger, I'm pretty sure. He might have gotten Hot Rod Master too. I don't think he did, though. I don't think he got Hot Rod Master. I think Joe Montana was when that happened. There's that bunch tied in. There's that bubble screen. And at this point, you know, he, you see how fast Des is throwing that? You didn't realize, like, you could lead the bubble screen with freeform passing. Um, that's another element. So, again, base from right to left. That's kind of his favorite shotgun run play. And now we're going to be in a third and seven situation. Now, if Dez gets a first down here, I mean, he's in a pretty good spot uh, to close the game out. So, we have third and seven. We go to – he's going to go to wide curl over here. Yep, going to go to wide curl. Uh, this play has really not been that successful for him. But we'll see here. There's that tight end route again because you have K because you don't have KO abilities, you catch every single pass. And so now it is fourth and 3. Uh, so he got four free yards there when it was really in my opinion a bad read, but because we don't have, you know, KOs, you know, you're not able to not able to do much. So he's going to run the clock all the way down, take a timeout, and then he's going to try to go get this fourth down and win the game. So essentially, uh, let's see what he calls here. So verticals, there's the wheel. So it's verticals, and then we have the Texas. So essentially at this point, the read, I'm looking here, not there. Now I'm looking here. Okay, this is open. This is open at this point. It's going to be really hard for him to catch that with his user. I mean, look how wide open X is. Um, but instead, we're going to throw a crosser. And because you don't – or he almost caught that. I don't know if he possession caught that or not. I don't think he did. I don't think he possession caught that. If he possession catches that, that's 
that's an easy read, or that's a, that's probably a catch, I, I think, because you don't have KOs. But anyway, so K-Mac, now everything flips, and K-Mac has a chance to go at least tie it, if not win it, if he gets a two-point. So he runs the ball. Why does he run the ball? Because he wants to get this clock down, because he wants to make sure that this is the last possession. So now we're going to go to that slant post combo. Watch his slant route, as you can see there, and this is what I'm talking about. So like trips tied in. Look at this. Number one, this is not the greatest read. But this slant route, it just did not win well against man. So you see here, this is a this is a cross man on a triangle. Like he's coming down. The little bump happens on that flat. You know, the, the bumping of spread formations I talked about. And throws an interception right back to him. <laughs> so he has two timeouts. He does have a chance still. It'll kind of depend on what Des does. He goes to base right. Again, every time Des has ran base in this game, he's ran it from right to left because his quarterback is right-handed. Another one of his money plays at this point in the year and has been true of the entire year is this power alert bubble. This time he decides to hand the ball off, takes the ball up. Now we're in a third and six situation, and if Des gets a first down, the game's over. So a couple things he could do here. He is in a, probably end up running the ball one more time and then go for it on fourth down. Bubble screen was wide open, decided just to run the ball, and he's going to get a free first down, and that's going to do it. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. Just want to do some film on the early Madden uh, gameplay from Madden 24 so that we can kind of look at, you know, what worked, what didn't, and uh, what, you know, what's going to be it going to go forward. So thanks for watching the video, and uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure to sub to the channel and uh, check out our school.com community if you want to get access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks, both for Madden and for NCAA. The link to sign up for that is going to be in the description below.